practice calculations. These are calculations that are similar to what you'll see on the quiz next week. This is the video that I mentioned that I would make for you when I was in the podcast. First question here, significant figures on this calculation. Let's do what's in the parentheses first. 273.14 minus 222. Let's do that. Oops. Here, let's get a clean sheet of paper for you. Okay, nice and clean. All right, let's do 273.14 minus 22.0. What is the answer? You may think that the answer is 51.14, but that would be wrong because you need to respect the significant figures. Here, the number ends with the tenths place. Here, the number ends with the hundredths place. You're only allowed to use, when you are doing addition and subtraction, you are only allowed to use the numbers that go as far as the roughest measurement. This is the roughest measurement. You're only allowed to use the tenths place. So the correct answer is 51.1 for that calculation. Moving on to the rest of that calculation, you see it was divided by 19.35. I'm going to take this number, the correct number is 51.1, divided by 19.35. How many significant figures should I have in the answer? I should have three. Why? Because count them, one, two, three. One, two, three, four. You need to use, for multiplication and division, the lowest number of, of, of significant figures in the calculation. And here, that's 3. Let's do this. 51.1 divided by 19.35. Answer is 2.64. Or is it 2.641? Or is it 2.6408? That's right, my friend. It is 2.64. That is the correct answer. Not at 2.641. No. 2.6408. No. Okay. So, next problem. How many cubic centimeters are in 1.2 times 10 to the fifth cubic meters? Oh, I'm sorry. This is a typo. Let me fix that right now. I meant to say uh, just how many centimeters are in that many millimeters. Okay. So let's, uh, let's just fix that. So uh, what was the number again? Yes, uh, 1.2 times 10 to the fifth millimeters. Let's, let's, let's do that. Clean piece of paper, kill no trees. Okay, I have 1.2 times 10 to the fifth millimeters. Now I happen to know, because I memorized for the quiz, that in one meter, you get you, you have a thousand millimeters. How does that help me? That helps me because I happen to know, because I memorized for the quiz, in one meter, you get a hundred centimeters. Why am I using one meter? It's because I can cancel these meters out, and I see everything is canceled out, and now I have centimeters. Why couldn't I just say 10 millimeters down here and one centimeter down here and forget about all of this. I could cancel out millimeters and then get the answer. Well, I could have said that. If you have this in your brain, more power to you. Go ahead and use it. It's just when I studied for this quiz, or actually when I was making the podcast, ha ha ha, I didn't mention that. I mentioned this. So this is what I hypothetically studied, and so this is what I'm using here. How many millimeters there are in a meter? That's what I memorized. How many centimeters are there in a meter? That's what I memorized. So um, these get canceled, and now on my calculator, I do this times this divided by this. By the way, you need to know how to use your calculator. Please watch how I use mine. Yours is probably quite similar. The best, way to, oops, the best way to use this calculator is like so, 1.2, and then there is an EXP key or an EE key. Those of you with TI calculators, you have a, an EE key or a times 10 to the power of key. Those of you with Casio or Sharp calculators, you have an EXP key. So this is EE5, and then what was it again? Times 100 divided by 1,000, so times... 
100 divided by 1,000. That's 12,000. So my answer, oops, where is it? Yes. My answer here is 12,000. Uh, 12,000 what? It's not that because it's crossed out. It's not that. It's not that. It's not that. It's that. 12,000 centimeters. If you want to get all fancy, you can say 1.2 times 10 to the 4 centimeters. Great. Next problem. It's the same problem, except everything is cubed. Okay. Now watch carefully, please. It's the same problem, except everything is cubed. So these are millimeters cubed, and these are centimeters cubed and millimeters cubed. Now, it is not the case that there are 1,000 cubic millimeters in one cubic... Uh, wait a minute. Yes, it, it is the case. No, no, it is not the case. Yes. It is not the case that there are 1,000 cubic millimeters in one cubic meter. That is not correct. That is not how you do this. You need to put the cube out here, all right? You need to put the cube out here. Why? Because it is the case that there are 1,000 cubed cubic millimeters in one cubic meter. There are 100 cubed cubic centimeters in one cubic meter. If you don't put the three out here, and instead you put it right on the units like that, you're going to end up with the wrong answer because that three needs to be here as well. That's what putting the three outside the parentheses does for you. So this is how you do that problem and any problem like it. Uh, let's get the answer. This is not going to be the answer. Let's get the real answer. It's going to be 1.2 times 10 to the fifth. So um, 1.2 times 10 to the fifth uh, times not 100, but 100 cubed, okay? That's very important. 100 cubed divided by not 1,000, but that's right, 1,000 cubed, okay? The answer is 120. The answer here is 120. 120 what? Not that, not that, not that, not that. It's centimeters cubed, okay? Watch out for that, okay? You can make sample problems for yourself. You know, you just give yourself some uh, cubic thing. So you say, oh, let's say I have 15 centimeters cubed. Um, how many decimeters cubed would that be? All right, you can just do that, uh, make that problem up for yourself. I know what you're thinking. How would I know the correct answer? Oh, let me show you. Mrs. Google knows all of those. See, 15 centimeters cubed, oops, centimeters, this is the carrot, yes, centimeters cubed, two millimeters cubed. See that? Right there. The answer is right there. Of course, you cannot use Google on the quiz. You will be proctored by the, the company Examity, and they will make sure that you are using nothing on the quiz except your brain and your scientific calculator. Not your phone calculator, your, your scientific calculator. Not a graphing calculator, your scientific calculator. Okay? Um, all right. Um, I think there may be a possibility that you could use the scientific calculator that's inside your computer, but I'm going to have to check with Examity for that. Uh, good question. Thank you. All right. Next problem. Just run through these as fast as I can for you. Of course, you could play this back anytime you want. Uh, which is the smaller volume? Okay, so when you have a question that says which is the smaller volume, uh, you're going to have to convert these into the same units because you can't easily compare nanoliters to cubic decimeters. You're going to have to convert these into the same units. Now here's something that uh, um, I didn't mention in the podcast by mistake. Uh, to solve this problem, you need to know a fact. The fact is that one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter. Okay? Cubed. So I have 10, 10 nanoliters, and I have 8 times 10 to the minus 9th decimeters cubed. Okay, now the fact is that 
one milliliter is the same as one cubic centimeter, okay? And I know that there are 10 decimeters in a meter, so if there are 10 decimeters in one meter. So I can easily convert this into uh, cubic meters if I uh, cube this, all right? Let's do that first. Oops. Okay, let's do that first. I'm going to take this number. I'm going to convert this into cubic meters, all right? So uh, one decimeter, no, I'm sorry, 10 decimeters are in one meter. Now, these are not decimeters, these are cubic decimeters, so I put the cube on the outside again. So that's going to give me this number in cubic meters. 8 times 10 to the 9th divided by 10 cubed. So 8 times 10 to the 9th divided by uh, 10 to the power of 3. That's 8 million, all right? So that is 8, oops, 8 million, which is 8 times 10 to the 6th. Now, the cubic decimeters cancel right there, and I get cubic meters there, all right? This 3 applies to both that and that and that. Don't forget, it's important. Okay, so this is cubic meters. The answer is 8 times 10 to the 6 cubic meters. I'm now going to compare that with 10 nanoliters, all right? Now, 10 nanoliters. I know that 1 milliliter is the same as 1 cubic centimeters, so this is going to take a little, a little longer. I have to convert this to milliliters first. How do I do that? Well, I know that there are 10 to the 9th uh, nanoliters in 1 liter, so these cancel. And I know that in one liter, I put liters on the bottom so that they could cancel again. In one liter, there are a thousand milliliters. Okay. Now there's no exponent here, so there's no exponent on my other units either. Okay. M L L N L L. So now I'm going to get the answer here. This is um, ten times a thousand divided by ten to the ninth milliliters. So this is. 10 times 1,000 divided by 10 to the power of 9 milliliters, and that's 10 times, and it's 1 times 10 to the minus 5 um, milliliters. So that's 1 times 10 to the minus 5. How did I know it's milliliters? It's because that's crossed out, that's crossed out, that's crossed out, and that's crossed out. Milliliters are the only thing here. Now I want to convert this to uh, cubic meters so that I could compare the size of this with the size of that. All right, so I'm gonna I have I have this one already in cubic meters. I'm gonna convert this one to cubic meters now. So one times ten to the minus five milliliters. Now I know that one milliliter is one cubic centimeter. Okay. So knowing that I have now 1 times 10 to the minus 5 cubic centimeters. But how do I convert this to cubic meters like that? Uh, well, I know that there are 100 centimeters in 1 meter. But we're talking about cubic centimeters. So this needs to be cubed. So now this is a problem where I do 1 times 10 to the minus 5 divided by 100 cubed. Don't forget the cubed. So it's 1 times 10 to the negative 5 divided by 100 cubed. Folks, it is totally not enough for you to be watching this video. You need to do the problems yourself. I know you know the answers now because um, they're in the video, but even so, you need to go back and do these problems yourself, partially because you need to train yourself on the proper usage of your calculator when you're dealing with exponential numbers like this. 1 times 10 to the minus 11. So the answer here is 1 times 10 to the minus 11. What units? Not these units. Not these units. These units. Meters cubed. 
meters cubed. Okay, so that is what 10 nanoliters is. This is what 8 times 10 to the minus 9th decimeters cubed is. Which one is larger? 1 times 10 to the minus 11 or 8 times 10 to the 6th? This one is larger. Let's see. Whoops. I don't know what just happened there, but uh, yeah, I don't know what just happened there. I think I lost a whole bunch of my work here. But you can just rewind to see it again. Now, this number uh, is the smaller number. So the other number was 8 times 10 to the 9th. So that means this nanoliter number this nanometer number is the smaller one, and the cubic decimeter number was the larger one. So the smaller number was this one. This one was the smaller number. Okay? Yeah, that one was hard. Mm -hmm. Okay, now here's a problem uh, with more calculation. Piece of metal ore weighs this much. When a student places it in a graduated cylinder containing water, the liquid level rises. What is the density? Okay, so those of you who are taking the lab uh, course also, you have the advantage here because very similar problems appear here as appear on the lab, uh, density problems. Uh, now, let me just work this out for you here. Uh, fresh paper. Oops, fresh paper. All right, fresh paper, here we go. Now, um, we've got 62 grams. The liquid level rises from 1,000 to 1,022. What does that mean? Density. What does that mean? Okay. Density means grams per milliliter. So density means mass over volume. Right? So, for example, water has a certain density. Uh, Mercury has a higher density. If you have a handful of water, it's going to be lighter than a handful of mercury. Let's see. Rocks have a certain density. Um, uh, 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 cotton has a much lower density. If you have a handful of rocks, it's they're going to be heavier than a handful of cotton. That's not to say that cotton is heavier than... That's not to say that rocks are heavier than cotton, because they're not. If you have a handful of rocks, but a truckload of cotton, the cotton is obviously heavier. Here we're talking about density, the mass per volume, the weight of something for its size. All right? right now, th this is really a measure of how packed the matter is inside of a inside of something so, such as a rock or, or cotton. Right now let's uh, calculate the density. It is 62 grams divided by the volume. What volume was that? They give us the liquid level rising. So if you put something in some liquid and the liquid level rises, the volume of the thing that you put in is the same as the volume of the liquid level rising. So this liquid level rose from 1,000 to 1,022. You just subtract those. The volume is 1,022 milliliters minus 1,000 milliliters. So we'll do that first. So it's 62 grams over this 1,022 minus 1,000. That's 22. Okay, so 62 over 22. 62 over 22. That's 2.8. So the answer here is 2.8, and the units are grams per milliliter, okay? Why are the units grams per milliliter? That's right. It's because there are grams here, there are milliliters here, and nothing has been canceled out. So this is the density of that ore or that rock. I know that those of you who are not taking the lab are going to have questions about this, so please send me email to answer your questions. Okay? If you need more practice problems, send me email, and I will help you. I will work with you online. All right? If you don't send me email, I can't help you. Uh, the recommended child's dose of theophylline, or whatever this is, it's an asthma drug, is this much. What is the dose in milligrams for an 88-pound kid? All right. This drug is given 14 milligrams at a time 
or 14 milligrams in a single day, I guess, for every kilogram of body mass. You need to calculate how many kilograms this kid's body mass is. So convert 88 pounds into kilograms. This is how you do it, everybody. This is how you do it. Oops. This is gonna be, okay, this is going to give me a new sheet of paper. So, New sheet of paper. This is how you do it, everybody. you got to take your 88 pounds of kid, 88 pound kid, and you got to convert that to kilograms. you got to find a way to put kilograms on top and pounds on the bottom. Why? That's right. We're just trying to cancel out the pounds. That's all you want to do here. And then you get the kilograms. So there's actually a, a conversion here, 453.59 grams. You do not need to memorize this. This is going to be given on the quiz. If you see it given in the practice calculations sheet, as you see here, then it's going to be given on the quiz. If you don't see it here, you're not going to... If you don't see some hint here, you're not going to see that hint on the quiz. Do you understand what I'm saying? This here is a hint. You see it here, you're going to see it on the quiz also. All right, now, um, looks like I only have a conversion from pounds to grams. So I'm going to have to do the kilograms myself. So let's undo this. Okay, so I can only convert from pounds to grams. All right, now, it said 453.59. Pounds is one gram. So I'm going to multiply these, or actually it's a division problem. So 88 times 1 is still 88 divided by this number. So 88 divided by that number. 88 divided by 453.59. That gets me 0.194 something. All right, so this is 0.194. Nine uh, grams, right? Pounds, pounds cancel. So I get 0.19 grams. This is wait, that's not right. Yeah, I'm sorry, uh, that's not right at all. I have that backwards, right? I have 453 pounds is one gram. No, 453, 453 grams is one pound. So that's not right at all. Notice how I caught the mistake, folks. I know that if the kid weighs 88 pounds, it's impossible that the kid weighs 0.19 grams. So I had put 0.19 grams. That's totally impossible because a gram is small. I mean, a gram is much smaller than your fingertip, a gram of most things, like a gram of water. So this is impossible. I must have done something wrong. In fact, I did do something wrong. I put the 453.59 in the wrong spot. It goes up here. Why? As you saw, 453.9 grams are in a pound. 453.9 grams are in one pound. Not the other way around. So it's 88 times 453.59. 88 times 453.59. So that's three, that's, that's 40,000. That's 39915.92. Three, whew. 39915.92. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, shouldn't that just be 40,000 because there are only two significant figures? Yes, you are right. However, I'm not done with this calculation because this is grams. I need to get this into kilograms. So it is okay to keep all the digits that you want until the end of your calculation as long as you're only using multiplication and division. If you, if you have addition and subtraction mixed in here somewhere, such as we had on the first problem right there, then you have to determine your significant figures right after that operation, right after that subtraction. But in this case, as long as I take my final answer down to two significant figures, I'll be fine. So this is grams. I know that there are a thousand grams in one kilogram. Okay, there we are. So this ends up being 39.91592 kilograms, okay? So that's, a, oops, that's a lot of kilograms, uh, but that seems appropriate for someone who's 88 pounds. Now, the rest of the problem was what? The rest of the problem was uh, 
14 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. What's the dose in milligrams? So I want milligrams, I don't want kilograms, right? So here we go. I have 14 milligrams. That's what I want. That is per kilogram. Per kilogram means for every one kilogram of body weight, you're given this kid 14 milligrams of drug. I can cancel out the kilograms if I just multiply by this. So I'm going to put that right here. 39.915. Suppose you had put 40 right here. That would be also just fine. Kilograms, kilograms. Now I'm going to multiply the top and divide by 1. 14 times 40. Or 39.91592. So, oh, all right. I'll just take this answer, 39.39991. Oh, no, no, I can't do that. So 39.91592. Um, multiply by your 14 milligrams. The answer is 559. This is 559 milligrams. Is this the answer? No, because this is a this problem was all multiplication and division. There are only two significant figures here. There are only two significant figures here. So that's not the answer. Of course, the answer is 560 milligrams. Okay, so this this here is the is the correct answer, 560 milligrams. It means you're okay if you give the kid 559, you give the kid 557, 555, 556, 564. Those are okay according to this calculation. Why? Because the instrument that was used to get that dosage couldn't do anything um, more than two significant figures. And the instrument that was used to measure the kid's weight couldn't do anything more than two significant figures. This could have been 88.0. It could have been 88.4. It could have been 87.9. You don't know. All you know is, all you know is that it was about 88. So um, the important thing is to get the two significant figures in here. Five and six are significant. Zero is not because there is no dot. Are there any questions? Please send me email, gchung at msmu.edu. If you send me email, I can help you. If you don't send me email, I cannot help you. Thank you.